we are on the frontiers of a new science. We're all starting to awaken to truths about who we are and where we're going. Open yourself to new knowledge about the power of spiritual energy and consciousness. Journey with Donna Smith Moncrief as she takes you through the world of mediumship, energy healing, out of body experiences, past life regression, and all topics that demonstrate evidence of the true nature of our reality. Thanks for joining us here on the Frontiers of a New Science. I am Donna Smith Moncrief, and on today's show, we will explore the topic of energy healing, a technique used to manipulate energy to create healing in a patient. All of us should listen closely to this topic as we know of many cases where traditional medicine has been limited, often leaving individuals with chronic disease resulting in a life of pain medication and long-term suffering. In my early research with mental mediums, some spoke of doing Reiki, using Qi energy, or doing shamanic healing. In my more recent research with physical mediums, I had the opportunity to view energy healers and follow up with patients. On our show today, we have the pleasure of introducing Inga Crossan, the founder of the Wallachia Development Center, a center that facilitates the study of physical mediumship, energy healing, and supports other practitioners that help us learn more about the nature of reality and consciousness. We also have Gary Mannion with us, who is known as the Psychic Surgeon. I was able to review the data and 72 case studies collected from Dr. Patricia Robertson, who studied Gary Mannion's work on energy healing between 2008 and 2011. There were some significant changes in these patients after the energy healing sessions with Gary were conducted. I'm also excited today because during our discussion, Gary is going to actually go into trance, which is a state that he needs to be in when he's conducting any kind of physical mediumship or energy healing. So we'll have the pleasure of being able to ask uh, Abraham, who is a uh, part of the spirit team that works with Gary during uh, this, uh, this radio program today. So first off, welcome Ingi, Gary, and Abraham. What a treat having you all on the show today. Hello, Donna. Yes, wonderful to have you all the way from Australia. What We're 14 hours apart, but we're still connecting. I know. Life is easy now, isn't it? <laughs> Inga, we met many about a year to two years ago when you were facilitating me, connecting me with physical mediums and uh, energy healers. Can you uh, tell the listeners today just a little bit about how did you get involved in connecting yourself with uh, energy healing? Um, My background is nursing. I am a registered nurse. And um, due connections I made in regards to um, nurses, doctors, and people talking about uh, that It seems to be a trend now that many people who cannot be helped by traditional medicine are now seeking out healers, um, energetic healers, and they have very, very good results. Um, Yes, I wanted to explore that a bit further, and so I came across mediumship, physical mediumship, healing, and, yeah, that's how it happened. Okay, and so... Can you tell us, so for you are in the traditional um, medical uh, community, Mm -hmm. Um, can you give us uh, maybe one of your first experiences you've had uh, with Gary Mannion, for example, that made you realize, oh my goodness, um, there is actually something going on here beyond uh, traditional medicine? Uh, Well, I had a severe... um back pain at times um, due to, you know, nursing, lifting patients a lot. Nearly every nurse has back pain. and But it was uh, traveling down my leg, and it would be times I get out of the car, and I couldn't stand up straight. So I had to wait until everything settled. So um, when I met um, the medium I have here, I don't want to call his name, so I don't bring him back from his trans state. Um, okay, he's in a trans state uh, now. Abraham, okay. Yes, Abraham um, gave me healing, and um, I could feel the energy coming out of 
the medium's hands. It was like my whole body was vibrating. It was amazing. And it became very hot. And, um, yes, and it lasted maybe 20 minutes, 25 minutes. And um, okay. the next few days I felt like I had um, worked really hard and my back got actually worse. And then after two days, it just went. It, it was just amazing. I just couldn't believe having had that for quite a long time that I was nearly missing the pain. <laughs> it was just very strange. Right. So, and so when... So, Inga, sorry? You, had a, you had back pain for how many years yep. prior to that? Oh, and on and off, probably 10. Sometimes it would be, uh, right. play up quite badly, but yeah. I also want to ask Abraham, um, is, it was interesting when you talked about that case of the, mm -hmm. it got worse before it got better. It's something I've seen yes. in a number of cases. It's almost like they call it a healing crisis. Um, yes. We'll want to definitely uh, hold that hold that question um, for for Abraham, I won't say uh, the medium's name, of course, because we don't want to bring him out of mm -hmm. trance. So, I I, I want to ask you what uh, just before we go and we start talking to Abraham and, and together we can ask uh, him some questions. What um, you said that there were things uh, coming out of the medium's hand, but what exactly did you feel during during the healing process, or did you feel anything? Um. It it was it, like a vibration, which actually it just goes through your body. It's not a localized vibration. You feel it through your body, and um, I have had many um, clients who have had healing here since um, the medium is in Australia a lot, and many of them have stated the same. It feels like. A vibration is coming out of the medium's hands, and it just it's not like a you know that it just sits on top of your skin or whatever it's just like it goes into your body it's quite it's quite hard to describe i guess, but many have the same impressions of feeling that it is like they can actually feel the energy coming out of their hands. Yes, and it's funny that you're uh, referring to this because I can recall in uh, Dr. Patricia Robertson's uh, report, she had discussed that as well. She had talked with a, a high percentage of the patients felt like a popping, they felt heat, they felt tingling, they felt movement uh, in, in their bodies. Um, I myself as well um, under had uh, experienced uh, energy healing in, in Arizona. Uh, by Deborah Martin, and mm -hmm. I know for sure that as soon as they, she put her hands over my forehead, I had a, it just started like a huge headache, uh, and I could, for about 20 minutes of a headache, and as soon as the hands went away, the headache went away with some type of, uh, as you talked about, your back pain got worse. It was like a healing crisis at that mm -hmm. time, so I can totally experience um, and I don't think science right now can explain how we have these vibrations. Uh, there's no explanation. There's no physical explanation. There's no traditional medical explanation for why we would actually have uh, vibrations going through our mm. body or why the medium would have this heat and tingling coming out of the hands. As we've talked about particular cases that you've seen the medium be able to treat, Perhaps is this a good time to uh, start uh, talking to Abraham? Well, I have to maybe wait another minute. Okay, you'll let me know. So can you Do give I me an example, uh, Inga? Um, are there particular types of illnesses that Gary is able to treat more than others? Donna, I have passed that question on to Abraham, yes? Okay. My specialty is in the elements of the back of the bed. Did you hear that, what he said? The specialty is in the bones and the, the back and the bones. Indeed, yes. Which is understand from my side of life. We have different specialists who specialize in different areas. My particular specialty is in the spine and in the bones. 
Okay, so that would explain then what that most of the illnesses that um, were were found were related more to the the, the skeletal, the muscular skeletal. Um, we have another question for you, Abraham. And again, thank you so much uh, for for being with us and helping us understand um, the the nature of of energy healing. Um, can you tell us, are the do the patients need to be um, in a particular mental state, like a different frame of mind, to be able to receive the healing? To pay the human body into a mental state would be a good start. Indeed, the individual simply has the want to get better. You must understand that any process that anyone on my side of life can carry out is at the will and behest of the individual. If the person does not want to receive healing, there is nothing that I or any other can do to change the structure, the form, the ailment. All healing in your world is self-healing. Uh, it's simply the conduit, the tool, the aid, in order to carry out that healing process. So perhaps you can um, complement what I interpreted, uh, Inga. But my understanding, one of the key things you're, you're sharing, um, Abraham, is is that belief um, and the willingness uh, to receive the healing is very important. Is, is that what you got as well, Inga? Yes. It is the state the patient or the client is in. He needs to be open to the healing and willing to receive healing. Okay. If the client is not ready to be healed, there's no point. When we talk about okay. belief, we understand it is not the belief, it is not the mental process, it is the intention. And indeed, if one in your world is religious, believes the process of healing to be evil, to be wrong, to not be possible. That will not hinder the healing. As long on some level, they wish to get better. They wish to be rid of their ailment. They wish to deal with the lesson behind their problem. Then the healing will be sufficient. Perhaps we can get a second part to that question. So I've noticed even in, in, in um, the study with the medium um, that I spoke of, between 2008 and 2011, some of them had to come back. It was almost like they came back for secondary or, or third treatments. They were getting better. Can you explain, um, Abraham, uh, if somebody has an illness, like, for example, they're, they're paralyzed, it's something, again, to do with muscular and bones, as you say, because that's the spirit team can work with that. Um, is there a reason that some people need to come back for more treatments? To this you must understand, any ailment, any illness within your world is a manifestation of a lesson that must be learned. Indeed, some lessons are slow, and some people are slow to learn. So indeed, one session may not suffice for one to learn the lesson entirely. Indeed, when we look at the physical form, your structure is such it takes time to mend, repair, and to change. Too much can cause damage within the body. We must allow it to progress and to change at its own time. If we release all the emotions at once, in some cases the lesson will not be learned. And this is why additional sessions, additional treatments may be necessary. That's fascinating. And I, again... <laughs> um, I just want to make sure that I'm interpreting that correctly. So this, we're good partners here, Inga. What I'm getting is mm -hmm. um, the, the fact is uh, Abraham was talking about the emotions. Uh, people are, have sometimes not learned the lesson. So let me see if I can get it in, in, in plain English from my perspective if I've got it right. So if somebody has um, an emotional ailment, and we know that Dr. Carolyn Meese, for example, has done a lot of work, um, and Louise Hay demonstrating that emotions um, relate to our physical, our physical challenges. So is it that, for example, if I've come to you, Abraham, to get healing, um, the physical uh, is, is, is I'm having, I have cancer in my body, um, I've been depressed for many years, the lessons I haven't learned um, to, to manage my anger, I haven't learned to manage uh, relationships. So am I getting that correct, that although you're treating um, 
maybe changing the vibration in some of the physical elements of my body, if I haven't mentally changed my way or learned the lessons that I've come here to learn in this physical world, um, the physical manifestation will continue. Am I getting that partially correct? Indeed. Your body is a manifestation of your perception. If you do not deal with the energy which has created your body into the form, into the state it is, then illness will ensue. If you are not ready to address the issue to your cancers and your depression, then the ailment will not disappear. Healing is not about treating a symptom. It is about treating and changing the cause, addressing that which would create the illness to manifest. So it's about changing the cause, um, making sure that um, we we address why we are having these uh, negative emotions in our body. Tell us, Abraham, what is it that you are actually doing through the medium to facilitate changes in the emotional state of the patient? It was understand that everything within your world and mind at its fundamental level is a vibration. Your perception makes your physical body solid, but it is not. When we assist with the healing, I will first check the skeletal records to find what I am allowed to do with vibration. I must then lower my own vibration in order to work through the medium. I understand that the physical form is made of many energies, both physical and material and spiritual. This is why we require the human channel to anchor, to ground, to manifest the physical energies. With this capability, we will adjust the energetic mind frame, the genetic code, the DNA sequences, in order to release the energy, to change the vibration to that which the human body, the human form, requires. Did you get that? Oh, yeah. So I guess we would also like to know, too, and um, and again, Inga, please jump in um, with any questions that you think our listeners, given the work that you've done, it sounds like you've been working with Abraham and the medium for quite some time. If there's other questions that you feel we should be opening up to our listeners, just just please jump in. Mm -hmm. Can you explain, Abraham, why you chose this medium? Uh, What did you have to do to prepare him to be able to do this kind of work? Indeed, the medium was chosen not because he was special, but simply because I resonated with his vibration. We belong to the same soul group. Therefore, it was easier for me to connect and to work my energy through his form both mentally and physically. I have spoken that we must lower our vibration in order to work with your side of life. My aim within this work within my field is to change the way that your doctors work, to change the mindset of the human mind. It has been many years since I last walked your planet. And man is as barbaric now as it was in my time. You have simply oh, built new toys in which to hurt one another. Your medicine, your doctors, have learned to treat symptoms in barbaric ways, whether through cutting and damaging the human form or by applying chemicals to create further problems. So indeed, I wish to change the mindset to teach mankind to understand why the illness exists, how it can be dealt with energetically and mentally and spiritually. Did you get that? Well, that, that's fascinating, and that leads into some questions. Inga, I think it's incredible what Abraham is sharing with us just about, you know, mm. the, the, the intent there to um, help, uh, you know, our doctors see a different kind of a paradigm, a new scientific paradigm um, into which we we should work. One of the questions uh, that that I have as well then, Abraham, 
what do we need to do uh, in humanity in general? What Do you see any potential changes? Is there any recommendations you have for us from a humanity perspective on how we can uh, better prepare ourselves to facilitate and receive these uh, energy healings and uh, perhaps put ourselves in a better place to keep our ourselves emotionally stable so that we aren't always having to treat symptoms or chronic disease? Indeed, we have yet to establish a step-by-step guide. However, if I was to give you a brief overline of that which is most important to focus on, I would advise any individual who requires healing of the mind, the body, or spirit to go into their own energy, to address their issue and their problem, to look beyond the symptom, to find the cause, and that your society is such that mankind uses his illness as a crutch, as a badge and shield to wear. While you give in to the physical emotions, the physical pains, to manifest the problem, you allow the master to become the master. You must remember that first and foremost you are spirit. Your world, your perception is your own creation. Change the intention. Address the issue and the lesson. And then you will be in the right place to receive the healing. Understand that the process you are going through is one that you have chosen. There is a lesson there to love. Rather than worry about the symptoms and how they affect your material life. Look instead at what is the lesson you must learn. Because until you address the lesson, you will never learn. You will never allow the illness to debate, to be removed. While you take a tablet in your world to address the symptom, you are ignoring the problem. Mankind can only bury his head for so long. While you do so, your illnesses, your ailments will get worse. And that's that's a huge uh, lesson for humanity. I mean, I got uh, go beyond the symptoms. Uh, We need to change the intention. And and really, I'm getting the message that um, the lesson is about love. And definitely in our society, we are ignoring, uh, very much ignoring uh, these lessons. We are just seeing also the physical manifestation of our bodies as something separate and not seeing the relationship uh, between the emotional strife that um, we have. Um, from from day to day. Inga, so coming back to you now, um, how do you see uh, this this uh, work playing out um, with Abraham uh, in the future? Is it is it more connecting people for energy healing? Are you doing workshops? Can you can you share a little more about what what are some of the next steps? Yeah, the plan is to um, become. Um, registered nationally registered and um abraham with the medium will create um a program for people who wish to become healers uh, healing channels to be okay. trained pro- properly and then um yeah and i would like to do research but i have approached some of the universities and basically all of them saying to me, um, we will not do research because of the funding is coming from, basically, from pharmacology. People I have spoken to, and some of my friends are doctors out here, and um, they say it's very hard to get research done because the medium and Abraham are very happy to be researched beyond, you know, but it is just very hard to get a facility to allow the research. Uh, Like one of the medium's suggestion was to have petri dishes. I don't know what you call them. You know, the dishes for for cells, say cancer cells. Mm -hmm. Yep. You see, for cancer cells to be treated with healing, yeah, and to see the changes which can be achieved. 
But, um, yeah, it's very hard to find any uh, laboratory to actually even consider us, you know. I'll be able to connect you with someone and the research that was done with Reiki and cancer cells. Um, I wrote about her in my upcoming book. I'm afraid to say her name on air just because I might mess no, it up, there, it, but I will put it in when we do the video to this. And what's interesting is, is it did show a statistically significant change yeah. in the, the Reiki had a, a, um, a, a small but statistically significant change in the cancer cells. But unfortunately, it's interesting what you raised, Inga, uh, Inga about the universities and not necessarily supporting it because the funding coming from pharmacology but in this particular case with this research with the cancer cells and Reiki was more so because uh, she couldn't get it published in any peer-reviewed journal and that's simply because yeah. as Abraham just shared with us our, our society is is still very you know materialistic we're not looking at the lessons we're not we're really not looking at any of this and so we're they're still very much in the traditional um, medicine paradigm and ha are having difficulty. Um, they're con a lot of that kind of research is, is just unfortunately not funded. So I'm wondering if we could just go back to Abraham um, before we close off the show um, and ask him what uh, he thinks of the efforts. Does he see any opportunities uh, for us uh, to move forward? For example, your plan is excellent, Inga, like, you know, the uh, training healers, uh, and um, being able to um, exchange or disseminate this knowledge more widely um, and also going to the universities is the right place to, to go uh, because we need to have more scientific research supporting this. But, Abraham, do you see any opportunities or are we going to be stuck for quite a long time, unfortunately, in the place that we are when it comes to um, uh, medical treatment? Indeed, my dear. Yeah, I'm not in the process of wasting my time. <laughs> They work with your side of life because I wish to achieve something. I wish to make changes. I am aware the changes will be slow. I am aware it will be on this medium's lifetime before I fully achieve that which I wish to achieve. But we shall make a good start. Indeed, in the coming years, as you experience time, research, growth, opportunity, will be presented to enable healing to become more mainstream. It's awareness, it's focus. Your doctors will start to accept. The research will be done, but it will take time. It will be a struggle, but we will achieve it. Did you hear it? Well, that is absolutely um, fantastic to hear that you are optimistic about where we're going um, with this, that it's going to take time, but we are we are going to uh, eventually get there. And a final question for you, Abraham, um, is can you give our, 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 uh, the listeners uh, and myself an understanding of when you're not working through the medium or working through anyone else here on the physical plane, um, what are your activities um, there in this, the different uh, dimension in which you occupy right now? It would depend, my dear, upon which perception I inhabit at the time. From that I reside, I'm aware of all my lifetimes within the physical sphere, every birth, every death, every moment. I can adjust my perception, depending upon the lessons and the desires that I have. And indeed, from where I reside, I continue to learn, to grow, to advance. And beyond the material wants and desires, I do not need to visit your restaurants, your brothels, your places of leisure. I find sustenance and growth in learning and understanding. My deepest desire for the moment is to help your side of life beyond its ignorant mental state. So indeed, I spend most of what you would deem time, learning, advancing, and growing. The easiest way for the human mind to understand is in becoming a lighter being, a purer form. You are limited with your earthly mind to even begin to comprehend just beyond the mental understanding. 
Well, that, that's absolutely a fascinating, uh, Abraham. I, I want to thank you. I want to thank the medium. And Inga, I want to uh, wish you all the best in your endeavors as you move forward with your work um, at the Wallachia uh, Development Center. Um, as Abraham has shared with us, I do think that there, there are opportunities um, I just want to share with you as well, when I was in Sarasota last year with um, David Thompson, I saw for myself the energy healing that took place with six patients um, during, mm. the, during the seance, and I followed up with these patients, and I believe it was something like five out of six had changes. And just like you, when you mm. talked about your chronic back pain, one of the patients had, had back pain for 14 years, um, and just with 10 minutes, of um, the the um, the control putting his hand on the head chakra, um, there 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 were changes. Uh, he he was able to live uh, somewhat pain free relative to what he was living with for 14 years. So I have started to not only through the literature, but through listening to yourselves and the experiences you're having with Abraham and the medium, and also through my own uh, research with other physical mediums and some mental mediums, seeing that. Um, with certain with certain uh, conditions, there there definitely is the opportunity to change vibrational frequencies, um, make alignments, and, and and relieve people of what um, unfortunately traditional medicine um, has not been able to relieve. So, with that, Ingrid, is there anything that you want to uh, promote or share uh, with the listeners about uh, any kind of event you're doing or? Um, work that's uh, coming up in um, in the next year. Well, yeah, mostly um, they, uh, Gary does does a lot of um, workshops here, and we're working on developing some courses to create create is maybe not the word to encourage some. Um, good healing channels, some good mediums, which all takes time and dedication and lots of sitting in the dark. So, yeah. I'm very excited about reviewing the show and really listening uh, to the messages that we learned from Abraham. And I just want to thank you again. When the medium comes out of trance, Inga, please be uh, sure to give him my... <laughs> he's out of the trance now? Yes, he is. Hi there. Well, I can say to you directly, Gary, I have to avoid saying your name. <laughs> <in the computer. laughs> so we are at the end of the show. I'm sure that did not seem like any time passed for you, but uh, oh, Abel Sherman asked some wonderful questions. And perhaps now since you're out of trance, um, I can ask you a question before we, we close off the show. So, Gary, when you're in trance now, um, you've been in trance probably for a good 30, 35 minutes. Um, mm. Any, any? Did you have any experiences during that? Do you have any idea what Abraham shared? Uh, no. So for me, working with Abraham, uh, when we start, I start to see colours, um, like a patchwork of colours, um, and that's kind of it for me, really. Right. So it's almost like just a little bit of a sleep. You, you had no recognition, recollection of what we were talking about. Nope. Last year, you were doing more physical mediumship, and you talked about the experience of sort of deepening your ability to do trans state and moving into energy healing. So where are you with all of that now? What is your What are the, the, the key activities that you're focusing on right now with your abilities? Um, so in regards to the seance and the healings, um, Abraham regularly will come out and, and actually do healings. Um, can you hear the phone? <laughs> yeah, you you can hear him working apparently, and and <laughs> doesn't sound very pleasant, but um, feels great apparently. And yeah, that's having some amazing results, very quick results as well. So there's still movement going on, and as well, do you want to mention anything in relation to your physical mediumship? I've heard from Inga and from others that have been um, working with you or observing you that you're just your development is just out of this world how quickly it's gone and maybe you could speak to that just maybe give an example of how you've developed in doing something that you for example didn't do maybe last year when we had an interview together 
Um, so our aim, yes, physical is always kind of go quick, thankfully. I, I always say that simple minds make great mediums. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so with sales, our, our ultimate aim is to be able to work in daylight still getting all the manifestations. We have a new guide called Mrs. Barnaby who works with us, who um, brings through the loved ones, full names, dates, telephone numbers, all that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, we would love to be able to work in light. And we have been asked to introduce white light now, so hopefully we're not far off. Okay, so you've done some white light, and are you doing any materialization? So... So Mrs. Barnaby, uh, the one I was talking about, she brings to the loved ones, and then they're able to, to manifest into the room um, and interact with their loved ones. Um, so, for example, one guy said he knew it was his brother because he could smell the alcohol and cigarettes on his breath. <laughs> um, wow. Things like that. So, yeah, we've got a lot of materialization. They, they're trying to introduce – we've got some very, very bright lights in there now. <laughs> blue and red. Yeah, blue and red and white, and we've got a lot of luminous objects. So, yeah, a lot of people are able to see what – what's going on which is great okay and I, that was one question maybe that's for another show we did forget to ask Abraham whether his team was uh, what he, they were doing in terms of, of facilitating light but again we've covered a lot we will put together um, we will make sure that when the podcast comes out and the video related to this podcast comes out we'll make sure that we put all the links to any websites or any promotional um, items that you're doing, because we do want to raise awareness about energy healing and the work that you're doing and about the messages uh, from Abraham. So I just want to thank you formally again. Thank you, Inga, Abraham, and Gary for being on the show today. In a world where we thought that faith healers were fraudulently taking advantage of vulnerable patients, we are now realizing that there are indeed some authentic healers in the 21st century. How does energy healing work, and how can we utilize these inner powers to complement traditional medicine? You are listening to Inge Crossan, the director of the Wallachia Development Center, and Gary Mannion, known as the Psychic Surgeon. During this special podcast, Gary Mannion went into trance, and we were able to ask Abraham, which is an, an, an entity, really, that were medical doctors that work in the spirit team, talking through him while he was in trance. We got to know um, a bit of information about energy healing and how, how important it is that we have a certain belief about our ability to heal. Uh, we have to have a certain intent. He talked also about the emotions, our emotions, and how that contributed uh, to uh, the physical manifestations. And if we don't change our emotions, despite the spirit team changing vibrational frequencies, we still have to make sure. Join us each week as Donna Smith Moncrief explores topics related to spiritual energy and consciousness. Collaborating with other experts, they will share evidence and ideas for you to integrate consciousness based ideas into your life for a positive transformation. 